Okay, so today we're going to come up with a distribution. Uh, this is for the, uh, in relation to the call center example in section 8.1 of the data management textbook for uh, McGraw-Hill. Um, this is for the Ontario data management course, uh, MDM4U. And uh, I'm going to come up with uh, a, a bunch of these, um, uh, a bunch of things to do with a spreadsheet where um, you're working with random data. Now, a lot of what I'm going to answer here um, has been into numerous uh, student questions regarding when data is random, it appears as though um, the data, when you update it, uh, like let's say if I update the spreadsheet, if I do anything to the spreadsheet, it seems as though the uh, data seems to update itself all the time, which is kind of annoying, especially if you're trying to do statistical work on it. It's better to have uh, random data generated once and then uh, and then some work be done on it. So let's simulate that problem we had this afternoon where we had, um, at least the afternoon of this lesson, uh, where we had um, an, uh, a bunch of call center times during an eight hour shift. Uh, these are just gonna be randomly generated numbers and chances are very likely, very, very likely that none of the numbers will be equal to each other. So that's kind of what we're after here. Um, but we have to, because there are basically uh, eight hours in a day and uh, 60 minutes in an hour, if we're going to divide an eight hour shift into minutes, that's what, what is it, eight times 60 sorry, eight times, yes, eight times 60, which is 480. So we're gonna multiply this random number by 480 in order to get uh, some number um, to come out. Now, that number will disappear the minute I make any change at all on the web page, and notice it varies wildly. So I'm going to now, um, copy that into 240 cells. There we go. Okay, so now, now that we got that, we now, um, we now have a second cell, or a second column, which deals with the fact that the data in this column is um, quite, well, it's quite volatile, meaning that the, the data changes. I mean, the minute I hit the delete key on a blank cell or do any change at all, it changes the entire spreadsheet. So that's not something we can do good statistics on. So we shall select all of column A by clicking the header. Select control C, that selects the data in column A. And now we select the first cell at the top of column B go to edit, go to paste special, and it's going to ask us for numerous options. We only want one. What we want are the values. We want to copy the values and not the formulas that underlie the values. So that means we select values. Notice we have other options to select formulas, formats, you know, you can have, you can duplicate fonts, you can duplicate colors and things like that. We're not really concerned about that. We just want to duplicate the values. So here we go. Uh, hit the OK button, and there it is. It's all copied. And notice that the column next to it, because it's random and volatile, was sensitive to a change made on the page. And it, that caused all of the values to change in column A. We're not going to be worried about anything happening in column A from here on in. It's column B that carries the data we're concerned about. In fact, so much so, we're going to sort this data uh, from smallest to largest. So that means we um, select the key that says sort ascending and click on it. Um, we ignore this dialog. Well, we don't really ignore it. Uh, because we, we do have to interact with it. It says here, should we expand to the current selection, which means it's asking us to consider the values in column A in our sorting. And no, we don't want that. These columns have nothing to do with each other, or at least that's how we're going to treat it. 
So I'm going to continue with the current selection and then hit sort. And notice that the, time, the times of the call center now um, um, are sorted from smallest all the way to largest. Okay. So now I'm going to um, I'm going to put a zero here, and then I'm going to put in this column. This is going to be the difference between this cell minus this cell. And I hit enter, and I get that. Now, basically, what I want to do here is um, I want to take the the times that elapsed between the calls. So some of them the, the times that elapse are very small and some of them are very large. And I'm going to drag this down. And notice this uh, this is the time between the calls and the call center. But notice that uh, your one thing is true that you're not going to be able to sort this column because um, the formulas that we just used had cell references in them that were relative and it basically if we had to sort that list we're we're actually causing you know uh, unpredictable problems uh, to the formulas that are adjacent to it so what we're going to do is do a uh, a copy of this column and we're going to paste again we're going to paste once more into this column, sorry, uh, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna copy this column, paste into this column using paste special. Now I showed you how to do it using the edit menu. I can also do it, sorry, I can also do it by right clicking here. I'm gonna use paste special here, paste values, and voila. I now have that. But these, because I only asked to paste the values, these are just the raw numbers now. I can now select column D like I did before, and then I go sort ascending like I did for column B. And um, once again, oops, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the way it works. And notice that this goes from pretty much zero seconds all the way to 12 and a half seconds or close to it. Um, so now let's um, let's now do a count let's now count the frequencies by which we have um, certain call times. And this is for numbers less than one, less than two, less than three, less than four, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Do we go bigger than 11? Let's check. Uh, we go up to 12 and a half. So 12 and finally 13. Now, basically, I want you to realize that this isn't really a good, um, a good text label. These are just numbers. But what I mean here are that these are numbers less than 1. These are numbers between 1 and 2, between 2 and 3, between 3 and 4, between 4 and 5. That's how I want it to be read. So uh, I'm now going to count the values using COUNTIF, open a bracket, and then go um, uh, using, using absolute cell references D1 to D240, comma, and I'm going to count numbers less than, less than, um, less than one. Okay. Now, and I'm going to close my bracket. Uh, there are 89 data less than one. Okay. Let's now um, do another count if, and this is actually now less than two. The only problem is I want to take away the value up here because that's already been counted. And so now um, now I've got another number. So now let's now D2 
do this once more. Take that one down one more square. And this is going to be less than 3. And this time, I'm going to take away a sum. And from experience, I know that I, I would have to make E1 an absolute cell reference. The rest of it, I believe, can be pulled down, except we're going to get zeros, which is fine. I just need to update these. Four. That's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Let's see now if these numbers work out. These numbers should add up to, well, what were my cell ranges? Okay, they should add up to about 240. Let's see if it does. And in fact, it goes exactly to 240. From here, we can go ahead and make a frequency histogram except our x's and y's are backwards. Uh, just for badness, I'm just going to move this over to the other side. And I'm going to make a table out of these two columns. And not a table, but a chart. So just use a bar chart. And it looks like we have two pieces of data here, two series we don't want. It looks like series one is the one we want to get rid of. And uh, let's just finish this only because uh, I'm almost out of time on this video. And notice that this is, in fact, a, it looks like an exponential distribution over here. Okay, and that's the end of my presentation.